Well, you want to find me Cause that's what my father does Travel's not the end game, the journey's where you are And you never want it perfect, you just want it my heart And the story isn't over, if the story isn't good A failure's never final when the father's in the room So the failure's never final when the father's in the room Prodigals come home, the helpless find home. The love is on the move when the father's in the room. Prison doors swing wide, the dead come to life. The love is on the move when the father's in the room. Miracles take place, the cynical find faith. Love is breaking through when the father's in the room. Jericho was a quake, strongholds now are shaking. Love is breaking through when the father's in the room. Said love is breaking through when the father's in the room. Champion Cowboy Church, how y'all doing this morning? Isn't it great to be in the house of the Lord? And just to be in the Father's house, amen? And I just encourage each one of y'all to just lay your burdens down and just, these altars are always open, just come to the altars and just praise the King of King and the Lord of Lords during this time, okay? Father God, just thank you for allowing us to gather today, Lord. And Father, we just ask that you just have your way in this place today and touch those lives that need to be touched, Father. And Father God, just open our hearts, our minds, and our ears. And let us hear what it is that you're saying to us today, Father. Just so we can be doers of the word and not just hearers of the word only. And Father God, just let your anointing fall on Pastor Gene today as he delivers your message to us. In the precious name of Jesus Christ we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Hope y'all are going to sing this one with me too. Because that was beautiful. I've been held by the Savior I fell far from above I've been down to the river 
And I ain't the same A prodigal return Is in Jesus. Thank God that yesterday's gone. All my sins are forgiven. Cause I've been washed by the blood. I'm no stranger to the prison. I've worn shackles and chains But I've been freed and forgiven I'm not going back, don't ever be the same That's why I say, oh, my hope is in Jesus Thank God my yesterday's gone And I've been washed by the blood Here we go There's a kind of thing Just breaks a man Breaks him down to his knees God, I've been broken more than a time or two Yes, Lord Then he picked me up and showed me what it means be a man. Oh, my hope is in Jesus. Thank God my yesterday's gone. Oh, my sins are forgiven. I've been washed by the blood. Sing that one more time. Is in Jesus. Thank God my yesterday's gone. Yes, all my sins are forgiven. Oh, I've been washed by the blood. Yes, I've been washed by the blood. See you again. 
Give him a hand. What a beautiful day today. Great day. It's a day that the Lord hath made. Amen. If we have any uh, first time visitors, we got a, a card we'd like you to fill out. It's in the seat back in front of you. It looks like this. It's called a welcome home card. If you'll fill that out and turn it into at the uh, desk up there, they'll give you a, a gift. I'm going to give you some information about what's going on with the church. We have a, another deal over here in the corner. It's got a lot of information on what we're doing in church. If you want to get involved, there's lots of stuff you can do. Uh, first time visitors. You know, if, if it's your first time and you don't have a home church, man, try us on again. I guarantee you we'll love on you. we got a pastor that's passionate, passionate about people getting saved. Amen. Well, right now, it's the church's favorite moment. Amen. 
Tithes and off. Amen. You know, I got some good news for you today. You know, the Bible says it pleases God to prosper you. Amen. And you know what? By saying that, that don't mean just in the good times. That means in the bad times too. But you know, if, you can, if you'll stay close to God and you'll do what he asks you to do, there'll be no bad time. Amen? Y'all believe that? I believe it. His word says it all through that Bible. I'm going to read a scripture from Psalms 35, 27. Let those who favor my righteous cause and have pleasure in my uprightness shout for joy. Be glad and say continually. Let the Lord be ma magnified who takes pleasure in the, in the prospering of his servant. That's scripture right there. We ought to be joyous knowing that he, he takes pleasure in helping us. He takes pleasure in prospering us. What, what, what kind of testimony is it we walk around with holes in our shoes, holes in our britches, saying we're broke all the time? What kind of testimony is that of, of God is that saying how good God is? God's good, God's good, but I'm broke. I ain't got nothing. That ain't no testimony. Amen? You believe what his word says, you'll prosper. Father God, we just ask you to come. Bless this church, Father. Bless this offering. Bless these tithes. Bless these people in this church today, Father. We lift you up. We give you all the praise and all the glory. Father, we just thank you for your son. And we're going to lean on you every day of this new year, Lord. We're going to go to you first thing in the morning. We're going to go to you at lunchtime. And we're going to go to you before we go to bed, Father. We're going to put you first in everything we do this year. Father God, so we will prosper in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I look to the cross I cling. Of its suffering I will dream. Of its work I will
lost you Beckon me Draw me gently To my knees And I am lost for words So lost in love I am sweetly broken Holy surrender At the cross you Beckon me Draw me gently To my knees And I am Lost in love, I am sweetly broken, only surrendered. Can you cross you, begging me, draw me gently to my knees, and I am lost for words. So lost in love, I am sweetly broken, only surrendered. Good to be in God's house. I, I reminded my wife this morning, she's, she hadn't even been to church all year long. <laughs> she said, and you hadn't either. <laughs> so glad that you're here. So glad that you decided to come and worship with us. I, uh, I'll tell you this, people that come to church on days like today love Jesus. Amen. I can understand cold, I can understand wet, but wet and cold. I tried to call in sick this morning, nobody didn't answer the phone. <laughs> Glad that you're here. We're beginning a, a new series today. We'll be going for the next few weeks, and I just want to encourage you not to miss a week. Invite somebody, bring somebody with you. I'm, I'm passionate about what I'm going to be sharing with you, and and it's not what you think. It's not a typical New Year's sickum kind of message. Maybe it is. I don't know. But I just want to tell you, you, you don't want to miss a week. We're going to be talking about several different things. And I'm certain, I'm hopeful that after you hear today's message, you won't want to miss a single week. I titled the, the series... Upwards and onwards for you left brain thinkers. And for the right brain thinkers, we're going to call it onwards and upwards. How's that? Okay. <laughs> Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Have you ever heard this lie? The truth is, bones heal, but words cut deep. Words leave lasting hurts and scars. See, when I was a kid, I was told multiple times that I would never amount to anything. And when I say multiple, it was a lot. I was told this so many times that I began to believe it. I began to believe that I would never amount to anything. I began to believe that I would go down that old family rut and just be uh, an alcoholic, and amongst other things. And it wasn't until one day I had a man speak into my life, and after he spoke into my life, I began to believe in myself. He told me, boy, you're smart. You're strong. Go to college and stay away from here. He didn't tell me, boy, you're smart and good looking. He said, boy, you're smart and you're strong. You go to college and get away from here. And you know what? I did that. And he was right because I found out I could amount to something. I could make a difference. And something that I learned is this. It's not how we start in life. It's how we respond to life. 
It's how we finish. A lot of people don't want to use that word finish when we're talking about life because there is an end. But let me tell you, let me let you in on a little secret. You're going to die one day. Don't know what day it is, but when your number comes up, it's, it's your turn. In this life, there is a beginning. In this life, there will be an end. And it's not how we start in life. It's how we respond. And I want to talk to you today about a man in the Bible who had a horrible start in life. He did as a horrible start. He was dealt a bad hand from birth. But he had an incredible turnaround. And I want to talk to you from that thought today. It's time for your turnaround. It's time for your turnaround. In Acts chapter 3, verses number 1 through 7, it says this. It says, one day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. Now a man was lame from birth, being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. And when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John, and Peter said, Look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. And Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have. Silver and gold have I none. He said, but what I do have, I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. I want you to pray with me this morning, please. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity once again to share your word. And Lord, I'm asking you today for your help. I realize that your word's anointed. But Lord, I'm asking you to give me the words to share with your people. And God, help us to not just be hearers of the word. God, give us a desire to become doers of your word, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This man was crippled from birth. He had to be carried to the temple gate every day, or he had to be carried to the church every day. And not only was he crippled, but he was poor. He was poor. He was broke. And the only job that he had was to beg for money at the church every day. How many of you know this? How many of you know that life can be hard? How many of you know that life can be difficult? How many of you know that life can be unfair? Those of you that didn't raise your hand, you're in for a rude awakening one day. (laughs) Many of you in this place today, you're, you're crippled, but not physically. You're crippled emotionally. Maybe you're crippled financially. Maybe it's spiritually. You just feel dry. Maybe you feel like God's so far away He can't hear you. Maybe you're crippled mentally. Maybe it's relationally. Friends, we must realize that sometimes we're crippled because of poor choices and bad decisions that we make. It's amazing how often people, they want to blame God for something that's happening in their life. Say, God, why have you forsaken me? God, why did you allow this to happen? He's like, well, why did you go over there and do it? That ain't what I said, God. Why did you let this happen? So often, he says, don't do this, and we do this anyways. And then we want to get mad at him and blame him. (laughs) Some people have made poor financial choices, and now they're financially gripped or crippled. For others, it may be drug abuse, or other addictions, and now you're emotionally crippled. For others, it may be that you had exes that hurt you deeply, tore your heart out, and now you're crippled relationally. Then there are those who have been crippled by no fault of their own. 
You may have been abused mentally, physically, or sexually. You may have been raised in a home full of chaos and drama and heartache. You may have been abandoned by your parents. I don't know. Some, it, it, it may be that your spouse left you unexpectedly. Maybe they had an affair. Maybe you lost your job because of a lack of work and, and you're crippled and, and you've been crippled so long that you believe that, that there is no hope for you. The Bible says that this man was crippled from birth. And certainly he believed that there was no hope for him. And I'm sure... I'm sure of this, when he was in grade school, when all of the other kids were swinging on the playground and playing tag and running and jumping and, and all of this, playing kickball, he felt hopeless, he felt helpless. And then you go on to the junior high years and the high school years and, and the dating begins and then the prom and then the football games. You know, they had football back then, I'm sure. Then all of the other kids, they're, they're going off to college and they're pursuing their dreams, starting their careers. Here he is crippled, probably feeling alone and feeling isolated and thinking, there is no hope for me. I'm just a cripple. This is as good as it gets for me. What I love about this story is that this man had an incredible turnaround. And what I want for you to, all of you today is this. I want you to know that there is a turnaround for you. Three of you believe that. Let me say it to this side. I like y'all. There is a turnaround for you and you and you. There is a turnaround in your future. Some of you are getting with me now. Thank you. Friend, it doesn't matter if you've been crippled since birth. It doesn't matter what people have said to you or about you. It doesn't matter. I said it doesn't matter the choices you've made. What matters is this, that you can have a turnaround. You can have a do-over, however, whatever you want to call it. And today I want to share with you three keys to a turnaround. Please. Please, please take notes. That's why you get that bulletin when you come in and there's pins on every seat back in here. And you know if there's a thief that's been in the first service before you because if that pin's gone. <laughs> here we go. Three keys to a turnaround. Number one, put yourself in the right environment. What I admire about this man is his resilience. He refused to give up. He refused to throw in the towel. He refused to say, I can't do this anymore. He refused to let his present circumstances affect his future opportunities. And so often we allow our present circumstances to inhibit or affect our future opportunities. He continued every day to go to the temple. Why? Because he wasn't a quitter. He was crippled, but he kept going. And let me say this. One of the, one of the, uh, the best ways or the quickest ways to, to have a turnaround is this. You can't quit. What did he say? He said, you can't quit. Quit. You can't give up. You can't throw in the towel. Don't do it. Why? Because your miracle might be just around the corner. Your miracle might be right after you take that next step. Your miracle might happen after you make the call. But you can't quit. You can't give up. You, you can't give in. He was crippled. But he kept going. He kept doing. Let me say this. Let me say this. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. The darkest hour is just before dawn. How many of you ever heard that song? The darkest hour is just before dawn. That's an old bluegrass song. It is. It, it, it's just before dawn. So never, never, never quit. Never give up. Never give in. Don't let it stop with you. Don't 
Don't throw in the towel. Just bend over and wrap the towel around your head and twist it here in the front and flip it over and wear that bad boy. Don't throw it away. <laughs> if you don't remember anything else I said, you're going to remember that. <laughs> Put yourself in the right environment. Notice something about this man. He didn't go looking for answers in the bottle. He didn't go looking for answers in the bar. He didn't go looking for answers at the club or at the party. He didn't go looking for answers in relationship after relationship after relationship. No, 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 no. He didn't. The Bible says that he went to the church house every day. This man chose to put himself in the right environment. He had enough sense to not be in the wrong environment. You know, I never got in trouble in the right environment. Many times people get discouraged. Many times people get depressed. And they begin looking for answers in the wrong places. And one of the tragedies of life is when hard times come that we want to run back to our old ways. We want to run back to the hog pen. We want to run back to the people and the places we used to know and go. Can I tell you, I've done it. And when you go back to that old place, it's just the same old stuff, but it's different people. Our hope is in Jesus not in all of the things of this world. Church, the wrong environment will never produce the right answers. What I like about this man, what I love about this man is even though he was crippled, he kept himself in the right environment. You can be crippled and still come to the church. This is the right place for you to be. This is a place where turnarounds can happen in your life. This is a safe place to bring your hurts. This is a safe place to bring your habits. This is the same place to bring your problems, your addictions, your afflictions. Because in the presence of Jehovah, troubles vanish. Hearts are mended. Men, women, boys, and girls can still be set free from things that have them bound. Keep yourself in the right environment until something happens. Keep going. Keep praying. Keep being faithful until your turnaround happens. What happens is this in, in life. People, they'll, they'll do something two or three times and say, oh, it doesn't work for me. What do you mean it doesn't work for you? Oh, well, I've tried that. Well, well how long have you tried it? Well, I, th- I think this is the fourth day now, and it just there's no, it's not working. Well, it took you 42 years to get in that mess. Give it some time. Persistence, resilience, stick it to itness is key to a turnaround. Amen. Amen. Here's number two. The second way to, to have a turnaround is this expect something to happen. Acts chapter 3 and verse number 5 says this So the man gave them his attention expecting to get something from them. Say this word with me, expecting. Are you expecting? Expecting. We should expect something to happen. Every time we come to the church house, we should expect God to do something in our lives. And and, and listen, this man wanted money, but he never expected what he got. You must come to God's house expecting something to happen because here's the truth. If you don't, it won't. It's pretty simple. Many people always expect the worst in life. Oh, well, you know, this this new year started and I'm probably going to lose my job. Speak it into existence. It'll happen. Well, you know, my spouse, 
I just hadn't been real good to them. They're probably going to leave. Yeah, you're probably right. They ought to leave. <laughs> well, my kids, you know, my kids. I'm, I'm worried about my kids, preacher. They're just my kids. Or are they just like you? They're going to do what you do. <laughs> preacher. I'm just afraid my car's going to break down. Probably will. If you drive one long enough, something's going to break on them. Why are we just surprised? Well, it's only got 219,000 miles on it. And you're still running on the same Maypops that was on it when you got it. Yeah. I'm going to get my money's worth. Well, don't, don't complain when something breaks on it. You know, so often our, our poor choices get blamed on God. If you don't change the oil in them, if you don't do a little preventative maintenance sometimes, something's going to break. And when it breaks, it ain't fifty nine ninety five to fix it either. <laughs> Preacher, I'm really worried about this coronavirus. I don't want to get sick. I could say a lot about that, but I won't. But here's what I know. To every life, there is a beginning and there is an end. And if heaven is as nice as we think it is, you won't have to pay taxes in heaven. <laughs> you see, and then some people expect nothing. You come crippled, you come broken, you, you come and you hear the worship songs and, and you hear the word and, and you expect nothing. And, and we must have hope and expect God to do something in our lives. Hebrews 11 and 1 says this, now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. We have hope. For. What do you have hope for today? What do you have hope for today? What are you expecting God to do in you and through you? What we hope for is what we do not see. I have a question for you. I know you're crippled, but what are you hoping for? What are you expecting God to do? What, what, what are you expecting God to do in your life? What are you expecting God to do with your life? What are you expecting God to do through your life? Oh, I hear your excuses. I do. But what are you hoping for? My goal today is to get you to understand that there is still hope for a turnaround in your life, in your life. Friends, your best days are ahead. I said your best days are ahead. Matthew chapter 9, verses 27 through 29 says this, And Jesus went on from there. Two blind men followed him, calling out, Have mercy on us, son of David. But when he had gone indoors, the blind men came to him, and he asked them, Do you believe I'm able to do this? I'm asking you that question. Do you believe that Jesus is able to do this? Yes. yes, Lord, they replied. Let me ask you, do you believe that God is able to give you a turnaround? Yes. Notice what 29 says. Verse 29, it says, then he touched their eyes and said, according to your faith, let it be done to you. Lord, I believe, 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 I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. But if you really don't believe it here, you can say it all you want to here. Do you believe it's possible? Do you believe that God is able? Do you believe that God wants to touch you? Do you believe that God wants to use you? Do you believe that God wants to bless you? Expecting, hoping, and believing God. For your turnaround is key. 
Expecting, hoping, and believing God is essential to your miracle. Expecting, hoping, and believing God is key, is essential to your turnaround. Faith is key to your turnaround. Look what Mark 5 says. Mark 5, 25 through 28, it says this. It says, then a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and spent all she had. She must have had a lot because 12 years of spending money at doctor's offices ain't cheap. And yet, insisted, and yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. Have you ever been there before? Instead of getting better, you get worse. But I love what 27 says. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Can I tell you, expectancy is a breeding ground for miracles. And this lady had an expectancy. And when she touched, the Bible says, when she just touched the hem of his garment. She was instantly healed. She didn't get special prayer. She didn't say, hey, I need to just get close enough to him so I can say, Jesus, pray for me. No, her deal was if I could just touch him. And my question to you this morning is this. Do you believe God is able? Do you believe God will touch you? Do you believe that God has a miracle for you? Do you believe that God still wants to use you? Well, preacher, I'm old and I don't think God wants to use me anymore. Who told you that lie? Well, I'm just too old to do that. Listen, God still has a plan and purpose for you. How do I know that? Because blood boom, 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 is still pumping through your veins. God still has a plan and a purpose for your life. I told him in the first service, some of us that have ate a bunch of gravy, the blood may be going boom, boom. but y'all healthy ones there's like boom, 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 that's going on through there. Expect God to do something. Just quit showing up and saying, okay, Lord, if it's your will. Expect him to do something in your life. And then here's number three. I'm going to put the mules in the barn right here. I'm I'm just about finished. And when I say I'm closing, I really am eventually. (laughs) I have a question. Church, do you want to turn around in your life? Do you want God to do something miraculous in your life and through your life and with your life? Yes, no, maybe? Here's number three. Write this down. Get up. Get up. Y'all help me this morning. Look at your neighbor and say, get up. Look at the other neighbor, the one you don't like, and tell them to get up too. (laughs) Quit making excuses. We're so good at making excuses. In spite of the odds against him, he got up. And the Bible says that Peter just reached out his hand and said, get up. And a big reason people never experience a turnaround is because they expect God to do everything. What do I mean by that? We say, okay, Lord, if it's your will, then let a big, beautiful blue elephant come through the living room. (laughs) Can I tell you, it's probably not going to happen. A big reason people never experience a turnaround is because they expect God to do everything. Everything, everything. Listen, I want you to hear me. Do your part first. I said, do your part first. Get away from bad influences. Because God honors our obedience. Do your part first. Fill out the application. Do your part first. Ask her out. Ladies, it's 2021. Do your part first. Ask him out. Do your part first. Confess your addiction. Do your part first. Go to marriage counseling. Just do your part. Sometimes you need to quit deliberating and just make it happen. Sometimes you need to quit thinking about it and just do it. Friends, when we don't do what we can do, we miss out on what God will or can do in our lives. 
Listen to me. It didn't rain until Noah built the ark. The water didn't part in the Red Sea until the man of God, Moses, held out the rod over the water. When all those chariots and horses and army was coming after them, and they were worried, they were frantic, they thought they were going to die right there, and the horses, boogity, 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 coming up behind them. They thought they were going to die. They, they thought it was over. And then the man of God was obedient and stuck that staff out over the water, and it parted. And the Bible says that they walked across on dry ground. The ladies didn't even get their pedicures messed up. Listen to me. Listen to me. There's, there's so much that God wants to do in your life and, and through your life, but you're missing it because he wants you to take that first step. This lady that had the issue of blood for 12 years wouldn't have never been healed had she not did her part first and reach out and touch the Lord as he was going by. Do your part. Because when we do our part, God will always do His. Acts chapter 3, verses 7 through 10 says this. It says, taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly. I want to show you something here. When he reached out and took hold of his hand, he was still crippled. I want you to get that. Just when it seems there is no way, just when it seems like God's not, not going to do anything, he reached out and he grabbed his hand. I'm going to show you something in here because we read across stuff so fast. He said he reached out, took hold of his hand, and he helped him up and... Instantly, you see, this man was crippled, but he did his part. He reached out his hand. He said, instantly, the man's feet and ankles became strong. Can you hear this? I want to I paint a picture for you. Use your own imagination. Here he is. He's, he's probably a middle-aged man. And he's been crippled since birth. And he's got these limbs that are called legs. And they're useless. And he's probably sitting on them. And they're no doubt. They're, they're turned in. And they're just they're disformed. When all of a sudden, the man of God reaches out his hand and says, I don't have any money, but what I have, you need. And he reached out and he said, get up. And when the man reached out his hand and took hold of it and he began to pull, at that very instant, I want you to listen with me, at the bones and everything that began to pop back in place. Boom, boom. And, and then all of a sudden, here's this man. He ain't never walked in his life. And so many of you, God's trying to get you to do something. And you're like, God, I don't know how to do this. All this man done was grab his hand and say, get up. And this guy had enough faith to grab his hand. And when he pulled him up, no doubt he was wobbly like a little baby. Standing there for the first time. And God's trying to get you to do things. And you're coming up with all these excuses of why you can't. You keep on disqualifying yourself. God, I can't do that because, God, I can't do this. This man right here would have died crippled had he not reached out to get up. And I'm telling you, get up. Get up. There's, there's a great big opportunity out there for you. Get up. Get up. Take the first step. And notice this. I'm going to read the rest of it to you. It says this. It says, he jumped. He didn't know how to jump. He watched everybody else jump. It says he jumped to his feet to begin and began to walk. And then he went with them into the temple courts. Walking. Imagine what that must have been like that, that very first day. And it was obvious it didn't take him long to catch on because it says he began to jump.
I'm saying that to say this. God can take you further quicker than you ever imagined. If you'll just grab a hold of that right hand and pull yourself up and stick close to him. It says he, he began walking and jumping and praising God. And when all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Listen, when he did his part, when this crippled man did his part, God did his. When God showed up, he walked even though he had never walked before. He made the first move and God came through. And I'm here to tell you today, baby, make the first move and watch God what he does. Quit making excuses. Quit telling God why you can't because he says you can. He says, I'm with you. I'm for you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I am the friend that sticks closer than a brother. And when he got his turn around, he didn't question whether or not it was God. Some of y'all want to tell you, start the business. You say, well, the economy's bad. Whose economy are you going to look at, God's or this one? If God's telling you to do it, do it, man. Buckle your seatbelt and hang on. Watch what he does. It says they recognized him and said, this is that same man. This is that same man. Listen, when God shows up, you will make a turnaround. When you do your part before, a turnaround is in your immediate future. You can hear the naysayers say, you mean that's old so-and-so, they don't quit drinking? He's really working again? Man, he ain't worked in years. Oh, I heard that they worked all their problems out. No, they didn't work them out. God did because they both still hard-headed. Wow, you mean they ain't doing drugs no more? Why don't people say, no, God, the power of God set them free some of you in this place you're ready to give up you're ready to quit you're ready to throw in the towel you're scared to take that first step you're scared to make that right move that first step there in that right direction but i'm here to tell you today that if you will do your part god will do his god will come through for you i said god will come through for you no one has gotten to where they are until they did their part first Listen to me. Right where you are right now, right where you are right now is the best place to start. Get up. Get up because there's a turnaround in your life. There is a turnaround with your name on it. It's not the start that matters. It's how we respond to things. It's how we finish. It was, the, it was the faith of this man that led to his turnaround. Imagine the weeks, the months, the years that he had been hoping for a turnaround day after day, month after month, week, I mean, year after year, sitting right there at that gate begging and seeing everything else in the world go by and he's crippled. You see, there's opportunities going to come your way. How are you going to respond? You see, it didn't happen until he made the first move. I heard a story from a, a pastor friend of mine in Florida. And this was only about four, maybe five years ago. There's a lady in a wheelchair. And she was in her 60s. And she had had an accident. And she was paralyzed from the waist down. One particular Sunday, uh, there was nothing special about the Sunday. And the pastor was gone. Good things happen when the pastor's gone sometimes, I'll tell you. And there was a, a fill-in minister there, and, and God began to move in that service. And, and, and the minister called people forward, and people were being 
visibly healed. And the minister grabbed this lady by the hand and told her that very word, get up, and she did. And when she stood to her feet, she let go of the minister's hand and fell back down. She goes, no, I want the pastor to be here when I get my miracle. And she died crippled. Why do we put up so many circumstances that need to happen? We, there's got to be a chronological order in my life. God, if you want me to do this, then you've got to do this and this and this. Listen, just get up. Just get up. Quit trying to figure it out. Quit trying to figure it out. Are you ready for a turnaround? Then get up. Are you ready for your miracle? Three of you, are you ready for your miracle? Then get up. Are you ready? Are you ready? Then do your part. Put yourself in the right environment. Expect something to happen. And get up. Get up. Get up. Faith is confidence in what we hope for. And my question to you today, friend, is what are you hoping for this year? What are you hoping for? What are you expecting God to do? Church, it's time for your turnaround. It's a new year. Trust God. It's a new year. Believe God. It's a new year. Take the first step. There is a miracle in this room with your name on it. You're in the right environment. Expect God to do something in your life and get up. My question to you today is this. Who's ready for a turnaround? Then get up. Get up. Get up. You say, preacher, there's so many events in my life, it wasn't supposed to turn out that way. I'm I'm like, yep. Let me tell you about somebody who can make a difference. He can change your situation like that. But you've got to take the first step. And you just did by getting up. That's an act of faith. Come here, Katie. That's an act of faith. God is going to do great things with you. God is going to do great things through you. And God, is, He wants to do. He wants to do great things for you. And we're going to begin to pray. She loves it when I call her up here. We're going to begin to pray. And when, when we do, I want you to begin to remind God. Some of you, there's somebody in here, God's telling you to start a business and you're scared to death. Listen, that man didn't know how to walk. But it wouldn't be just a few steps. When he got inside the gate, he began to jump. He passed up just walking. He was jumping now. He might have been breakdancing in the next chapter. Come on. Some of you believe, you believe in God for your family to, to get saved, to get right with Jesus. We are too. We are too. What is it? What is it that you're believing God for? Begin to tell him. Go ahead. Here. What I love about this word is he said, we need to expect something to happen. You know, so many times we pray and we pray and we pray, but are we expecting or are we just praying and saying, oh God, you got this, you know, whatever your will is. We need to expect God to do something and he's going to do something. That man, what if that crippled man, crippled from birth, what if he didn't expect his healing? Would he have got it that day? I don't know. But he did expect and God made a miracle happen for him. Amen. Father, we love you today. God, thank you for your word today. Thank you, God, that we can expect miracles, that we can expect turnarounds in our life, in the lives of our families and our loved ones and our friends and our neighbors. Lord God, we thank you that you are more than enough. And Lord, we ask, Lord, that you help us, help us to know when to get up. Help us to know what that looks like. Lord, help us to get up and receive all that you have for us.
Father, I thank you. I thank you for your word. God, I thank you that your ear is not heavy and your arm is not short. God, that you hear us. God, that you love us. I thank you that you want to bless us. I thank you, God, that you want to heal us. And Lord, today, I come against depression. I rebuke it from this place in Jesus' name. Lord, I speak joy unspeakable and full of your glory in this house. God, breathe joy back into us. Lord, I come against fear today. And I ask you, God, to replace it with faith. Strengthen us, oh God. Give us joy for this journey. Give us rest. And Lord, I ask you today that you would help us take the right step. Take the right step. Because, God, we know that you're going to meet us when we do. Help us, God, to depend on you. Help us, God, to trust in you. And, Lord, I'm asking you, please, 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 save our families. Bring them in, God. Lord, I believe you're soon to return, and I'm asking you to bring my family in. There's a bunch of them. Bring them in, God. Save them. Lord, put somebody in their path to tell them about you. Lord, we'd be careful to give you the honor and the glory and the praise that's due to you. I thank you that there's a turnaround with our name on it. There's a miracle with our name on it. God, help us to step out of where we are and step into where you want us to be. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You can be reseated for just a moment. I want to say this before I go today. You've got to believe me when I say this. Friends, your best days are ahead. I said, your best days are ahead of you. God has a great big plan, and you are part of it. So often, we want to disqualify ourselves. That's not your job. Your job is to step out step into what God has for you. Amen. You want to close us in prayer? You got the microphone over there? Y'all pray for me. I asked the Lord over the the break, I said, Lord, if there's something in me that that is unpleasing to you, I want you to take it out. And this sound system, since I got back this morning, ain't working right, and the Lord is helping me. Because I want to break stuff. And I, I know that doesn't fix anything. So he's helping me. So I'm just confessing that to y'all. All right, y'all pray for me. Y'all pray for me because I, I, boy, I, I got a bad temper sometimes. God bless you. Know that you're loved and know that your best days are ahead. Amen. What a great word and a great message. So we'll close in prayer, but two reasons to visit the info center on your way out. So we have a men's Bible study starting soon. I'm going to make sure my husband's there. He needs it. And we also, we also have two opportunities to take a first aid class. And I know that our family pastors are putting this on so we can be better prepared to take care of our kiddos in the classes. So visit the Info Center for the dates and the times, and we invite you to sign up for those as well. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your spirit in this place today, Father. And we receive the miracles that are coming because your people stood in faith today, God. God, thank you for what you're going to do, for the testimonies that are going to come out of today. Father, we pray that you'll bless your people coming and bless them going. Father, hedge us about as we drive in this weather. Keep everyone safe until we gather back in your house again. In Jesus' name, amen.